All right, so this is going to be a 10-minute whirlwind tour of Brief Embedded, which was a project on the Microsoft Robotics team. We wanted to enable makers and uh, hobbyists to build robots using .NET applications. So the way that we accomplished this was a stack-based virtual machine, very similar to a fourth inner interpreter that would run on the microcontroller as a data stack, return stack, and a bunch of zero operand bytecodes that it would execute. And then a compiler that would run on a .NET host machine. It could be a Raspberry Pi or something else that could run .NET. And this compiler would take a fourth-like language that we called Brief and compile it for this microcontroller. And built on top of that, you could have applications, and we have a REPL, so that it feels like an interactive fourth. Some of the words that are available in this flavor of fourth that we call Brief a uh, bunch of you know arithmetic and logical and bitwise operators, uh, stack manipulation words, comparison, fetch and store, choice and if are pretty interesting, we'll get into later, and a bunch of words for talking to the microcontroller itself. And all the black ones are the built-in primitives, and then extended from that, there's another library of secondary words defined in terms of those that extends the language a little bit further. So the demo, we're just going to use this uh, PGRC Teensy uh, with this sonar sensor. To get started though, kind of the hello world, we're just gonna control the LED on this, on this board. First of all, uh, it integrates with the Arduino IDE. It shows up as a library that you can just add. And normally when you open a blank sketch in Arduino, you just get this setup function and this loop function. And if you just tie brief into those, then it will set up the VM and it'll listen in the loop for bytecode to come over the serial connection. One of the interesting things about Brief is that you can extend the virtual machine with your own functions. So you can create functions that take no operators, or, you know, they take no arguments and they return nothing. Instead, they push and pop from the Brief stack. And so they essentially define zero operand instructions that then you can bind to the Brief VM. So the first 64 instructions are reserved for the machine and the next 64 are available to users to bind. So here we're saying instruction 64 is going to be a delay in microseconds. Instruction 65, that byte code, will become a delay in milliseconds taken from the stack, the amount to delay. Then we can flash that to the microcontroller and then switch over to the REPL. And this is the idea. You basically flash it once, maybe extending it with your own things, and then from then on you shouldn't have to work in the Arduino IDE anymore. Now you're just programming in fourth. You can see it's not a normal REPL. You do have to connect to the microcontroller before you can do things. Uh, and that's because of this split architecture where the, the host is running just the REPL and the compiler and the MCU is running the actual fourth implementation. So this little board has uh, an LED on pin 11, which we'll just define here. And this is how you do definitions in square brackets with a little tick named definition. And so here you can just set the pin high, set the pin low, the LED comes on and off. That's kind of the hello world, make sure things are working. We can turn on tracing and see what's actually happening. You can see that when you set it high, it's sending these six bytes down to the MCU. And so it just says, you know, push a literal 11, a literal negative one, and then do a digital write and return. So it's that simple, pretty small, compact, you know, a little protocol for controlling the microcontroller. To make it even more compact though, you can define words. So here we're gonna define, uh, you know, setting it high to be a new word called on. And now when you first execute that, you can see it sends down a definition, those same six bytes. Those end up getting stored in the dictionary space on the MCU. And now to execute on, it just does a call to that address, which is address zero and then a return. And off the same thing, it calls address six and returns. So that's a way of, uh, simplifying the protocol even more, defining new words, new commands, and then it just becomes a you know a little three byte set of instructions to call a word and return. Those instructions that we defined in the Arduino IDE, we can now tell the compiler about those. So 64, we're gonna call it delay micros. And 65, we'll just call it delay. That's in milliseconds though. And we can start using those in our own definition. So here's a blink word that just delays for however long you've asked on the stack. And uh, milliseconds. And again, you can see it sends down the definition the first time that it's used. And then executing it is just, you know, pushing a literal 500 and calling the blink word. 
So, so far we've used 18 bytes of memory. Let's take a little closer look at what actually is in memory on the MCU now. Uh, the LED pin got inlined as a literal 11. So there's a lit eight instruction followed by an operand that's uh, embedded in the code. It's one of the very few non-zero operand instructions. Hi also got inlined and then digital write return becomes the definition for on. Similarly for off, but with a setting it low. And then you can see here blink uh, is defined as a call now to on. So instructions actually are seven bit. And if the high bit is set, then that actually flags that this is a call. And it takes the next byte combined, those 15 bits become an address to call. So there's no actual call instruction, but they're just encoded this way very efficiently. This is completely made for a subroutine threaded fourth, assuming that secondaries are going to be strings of calls. So here it calls blank, delay, calls off. Uh, and it should be noted that a call followed by a return like this is automatically tail call optimized. So that turns into a jump. And in that way, you can use recursion to do looping without having to worry about blowing the return stack. It's an important feature. There is no jump instruction, though. Calls are just optimized. Now, back in the uh, REPL, we can you know play with this a little bit more. Make it blink a little bit shorter. Uh, maybe create a new quotation that does some actual work and set that as the loop. So this is a word that sets this brief quotation to be the code that executes in the main Arduino loop. And so the, the LED would just sit and blink. Now, moving beyond Hello World a little bit, uh, this is still a pretty simple app, but uh, let's try a different demo. Using the sonar sensor that's on there, there's an echo pin and a ping pin. And the idea is that you output to the ping pin and it makes a little ultrasonic sound. And then the echo pin you can read from and see how long it took that sound to echo off of something. Get the distance to an obstacle. So to ping, we simply uh, set the pin high, and then we're going to delay by just uh, 10 microseconds, a very, very small delay, and then set it low again. So it'll just send a little tiny pulse. And then for echo, all we have to do is wait for that echo pin to turn high. And now if we just do those two, echo, ping and echo, we can see that it gives different amounts of uh, microseconds that it took that sound to echo depending on how far away your hand is. Turns out that it takes 58 microseconds for sound to travel two centimeters, so to an obstacle one centimeter away and back. So this distance word will convert to centimeters. So now we can say if it's uh, your hand is less than 10 centimeters, then turn on the LED, otherwise turn it off. So there you go, set that as the loop word and you have a little program that reacts to things. And notice the choice word is used in there. We'll get into that a little bit later. So a little bit more complicated. Let's try something. Uh, we're going to say if you're less than 30 centimeters away, then we're going to blink in proportion to how far away you are. Otherwise, we'll do nothing. And what that ends up putting in memory is a call to our new distance function, a new distance word, converting to centimeters dupe, 30, less than. And then now, interestingly, we have this quotation. So this is what happens to things that are in square brackets in brief. It becomes this quote instruction, and 8 says that the next 8 bytes are part of this quotation. So now, inside the quotation, it's just a literal 4, multiply, blink, delay, and return, as we can see. And what the quote instruction does is pushes the address of that first byte, the lit 8, and then jumps over those bytes. So it just has the effect of leaving that address on the stack and doing nothing else. Then the next quotation is just two bytes long, contains just that drop and a return. So that's very simple. At this point, we have now two addresses on the stack, along with the truth value that came back from the less than operation. And choice happens to take those, it takes a truth value and two quotations, or two addresses to two quotations, and calls one or the other of them. And that's how we do conditionals in brief. There is no if, else, then. There's just this choice word and quotations. So here we go. This thing works pretty nicely. If you get closer than 30 centimeters, it starts blinking. We put a piezo buzzer on there. This might be a little annoying, but it's kind of fun. It'll beep in proportion to how close you are to it. So that is the basic idea behind brief. And 
that is just about all of my time.